Hi, Andrew Bell here with you. And this time, we'll be having a closer look at interest rates, which is in the news so much today. But beforehand, I just quickly want to touch on something. You know, the suburb of Surface Paradise was named middle of last year as the suburb with the greatest number of real estate transactions for the year ending the 30th of June, 2021. Who would have guessed? Now, it's been named as the suburb of Queensland with the greatest dollar value of sales some billion dollars in turnover. And it really highlights just how significant Surface Paradise has become and so popular. And I remind you therefore, that we have this wonderful project, Pacific One, that's really selling exceptionally well. And it's because there's this demand to be right there in that central area of the Gold Coast. So I've got details on screens of our project marketing team. Feel free to reach out and get more information about this great a centrally located project. It really is one that you should look at seriously. Now, after years and years of stagnant inflation and usually below or at least in the lower levels of the Reserve Bank's target levels of two to 3%, we see CPI uh, for 2021 recorded at 3%. It's not as bad as the US at 6.2, but above the Reserve Bank's range. And so there's much speculation about interest rates. In fact, banks have already factored in rising interest rates. And you'll find that most home loans today are a percent or more above the levels you could have obtained in the second half of 2021. They are not official interest rate rises, they are just banks preempting what will happen this year. The big question is whether this inflation outbreak is short term or long term. There are some factors that are driving prices higher at present. With a much reported supply, shortage of goods from all types uh, and partic particularly coming from overseas. There's been delays in deliveries creating shortages of goods in the stores and that always means prices will increase. We know that we have no immigration for the best part of the last two years with our borders being closed and so it means that the normal sh supply of overseas labour coming in hasn't been happening and so we've got a shortage of skills within the country at the moment. That's resulted in employers offering higher amounts of wages to lure people to their businesses. So some argue that as shipping gets back to normal, and now that our borders are open, that both of those two factors will reset themselves and perhaps later this year, inflation will start to drop. If that was the case, there will be less pressure on the Reserve Bank to increase rates. Yet, there are also those who would argue that higher interest rates are going to be with us regardless of those two factors I mentioned. Factors such as ever increasing fuel prices, particularly over the current Ukraine crisis, will see that the cost of importing goods, the shipping costs will go up as fuel costs translate into higher levels of costs for goods. So there are factors at play that you've yet to work themselves out. But the most likely driver of inflation will be the huge debts, both personally and by governments, right throughout the world. COVID has created a great deal of government debt and low interest rates has seen unprecedented borrowings for people to buy cars and boats and caravans and indeed real estate. There are huge demands for capital by banks and others to fund all this borrowing. And so there's going to be competition throughout the world for capital, which will drive the price of money up. So, what is the likely outcome? Well, it's guesswork. But what we are faced with already is that interest rates are higher than they were three months ago. And they're likely to go even higher. The Reserve Bank won't make a move before the federal election and are unlikely until perhaps the middle of the year to make that move. So, they have some time to assess how these varying factors, factors are playing out in the marketplace and how they turn up in our CPI measures. Traditionally, reserve banks don't move on interest rate rises if only a modest adjustment is needed. They'd be likely to do a 0.5% initial increase followed by perhaps two quarter percent rises in the subsequent months and over a six month period. They will then want to see what the response is in the marketplace to those rises. So if it is that official rates rise by one or so percent, then a lot of that is already factored into the existing borrowings. There's plenty of evidence that borrowers can handle a 1% increase for some time now. As a result of the Royal Commission, the banks have had to ensure 
that borrowers can handle at least a 2% interest rate rise above what they initially borrowed. So in real terms, a 1% or so increase in interest rates shouldn't have a big effect on the real estate market. But my experience over 40 plus years in the industry sees that what happens is that the media makes such a big song and dance about the interest rate rises that ultimately they create fear in the minds of buyers and concerns that interest rates may in fact go up two, three or 4%. And then they tend to be a little bit nervous about buying in the market at all. So I don't think there should be any overly great concerns about interest rates. But irrespectively, largely because of the media, it's likely to have a bit of a dampening effect on the real estate market in the second half of this year. I'd also love to invite you to our upcoming Sports Meets Business Lunch on Friday the 8th of April. This is always a great fun day, but also a really interesting one. We interview some of our leading business people and uh, see their insights and what's happening here on the Gold Coast in particular and together with some of our nation's best sports people. It's always fascinating and a day of good humour, great camaraderie, and it is a great way to help raise funds for the Surface Paradise Surf Club, which carries out more rescues each year than any other club in the country. You would really be helping save lives. So if you could join us, either by yourself or putting together a, a group of friends or work colleagues, we will look forward to accommodating you. So please, See our details on screen now for our events coordinator for the contact details. Well, the last days of summer here, but we look forward to continuing robust activity on the Gold Coast, which has not only been great for our real estate market, but great for the Gold Coast economy. The city's really buzzing and bubbling. We just love hearing the feedback from so many people who have moved here saying just how much they love it and wondering why they didn't do it sooner. For all those intending to move, this way, make sure you reach out to us so we can help you well in advance. There remains a shortage of properties at the moment, but if you give yourself sufficient time, it will take the stress out of the housing hunt. We're here to help. Warm regards for now, and I'll look forward to seeing you in a fortnight's time. Thanks for your time.